What's going on? Today we're analyzing DealCry ransomware. DealCry ransomware is the currently active ransomware that is hitting vulnerable Microsoft Exchange servers to Hafnium uh, zero-day uh, exploit. Zero-day exploit, yes. So basically this ransomware now is currently hitting all of the vulnerable servers of Microsoft and once uh, if the server is vulnerable, uh, the ransomware or the attackers will append this ransomware to encrypt all of the files on the server. So right now, we'll be analyzing the ransomware, see how it works, and dissect the assembly code, decombining the code, and understand how it works, what are the algorithms it's using, the files it encrypts, and uh, see how we can find a way out of this. So basically, I opened the ransomware with IDA. I also opened the ransomware with uh, Ghidra here, so I have two views in case I didn't find something in one, I would jump right to the next one. So basically the first thing I would take a look at is the strings. So when we take a look at the strings, we see that there is a pattern of AES, AES encryption, as you can see. So in these two lines, as you can see, um, we have instances of AES encryption and cryptograms. cryptograms. At the same time, if we scroll down, we're trying to look at patterns used by the program. We see here crypto bio library dot c. Is this seems to be um, uh, the how the program encrypts the files? As you can see, it uses AES, it uses RSA. If you go down here, and as you can see here, we have instances of public key certificates or RSA encryption. Uh, used here. So basically, in order to um, decrypt the files, you would need a private key. So it's not about the uh, password or simple XOR encryption or decryption. As you can see, there are instances of public key encryption. So unfortunately, you would need a private key to decrypt this. From the initial analysis, as you can see, if you go down more, see, as you can see, AES256 used to encrypt the files. Okay, let's take a look now at the imports. So in the imports here, I can see many imports related to the encryption. So as you can see, crypt, decrypt. Uh, I have crypt sign hash, destroy key, get random. All of these imports are used in ransomwares. So they are witnessed when uh, ransomware is analyzed. You will see these imports more common. And as you can see, get certificate. That's what, because the ransomware uses public key encryption. That's why it needs these imports. Let's go down, see what, we, as you can see, read file. So just get the files and encrypt them. Look up the files, go down. Yes, actually, lots of imports used more often in ransomware. Okay, if we take a look at the exports, it's only one. Let's go now to the hex view here, see what we can find from the hex view. Uh, not too much relatable here. Think about something, let's go down, go up. Okay, okay, let's jump now to the this is simply code. So basically this is the um, how it starts. As you can see the program, this is the SHA hash, MD5 hash, and it's portable executable. The file name, where it's to, where it is stored. And if you go down, you see the start of the uh, binary, how it works. So basically, the first thing it does, guys, as you can see, it becomes RSA public key encryption. And for every encryption process, there is a function used for that. For example, if I switch now to Gitra, and I look up here, 
RSA functions. Next. Okay, let's look in the labels. All right. So on the left, I can see the C code. And as you can see, the first function is this one. So we can jump directly to the function with the view here, as you can see. There is a whole list of these fun function. Start with fun. So let's see here. Okay, here it is. So all of these functions supposedly are responsible for the encryption. You can just browse them, but it's not recommended to use it this way. We will have to follow the graph and see uh, the first call and the last call. So I think the first call here, as you can see from the source code on the right, let's get back to IDA. See the graph view of this. So here's the first function. Now we have another function comes after that. All right. So after that, it's supposed to find the file extensions which it encrypts actually so if we search for something like uh, i don't know search for pdf let's see if it encrypts with the files um, next so Suppose these are the file extensions it encrypts TIF, TIF, PDF, Excel files, and of course many more. And the function responsible for that is this one. See, it takes many variables, many arguments to encrypt all kinds of files, all kinds of extensions. Now, as you can see here, um, it looks up the kernel DLL, and as you can see, we have .crypt extension here. What seems, what seems to be that it encrypts the files and appends the .crypt extension, as you can see in the instruction here. If you look at the right, at the C code, uh, let's see here. So this is where we are. It adding, it's adding the .crypt extension to the file after it encrypts it. And right after that, you see this function. And as you can see, it writes dcry as an, as an extension to the name dcry. Yes. So here, choose fwrite to type the cry to every file it encrypts. So it's adding the .crypt extension and writes the cry to the file. And then, and then it's done with the encryption process. It goes after the next file. All of that we can find in this function actually. This is the function 06FF0. That's doing the encryption process with the assistance of this one, lab. So we have labs. All of these functions um, intersect the same process, which is adding or encrypting the file, adding the .crypt extension and the dcry to the name. Now, if you take a look at the next piece here, as you can see, we have an email address. So this email address, supposedly, is the email address of the attackers that's used to send uh, for, the, for the communication if you want to decrypt your files. 
And as you can see here, we file has been encrypted. Let's see at the right. And this is the email address. And here's this the statement that's saying, good file has been encrypted. If you want to decrypt the file, please contact blah, blah, blah. And please send me the following hash. And as I said earlier, it's using the public key, the public key encryption RSA, so there is no way to decrypt the files on your own. You have to find a private key or just uh, conclude it. And this is the function responsible for that. Again, here we see the same stuff, encrypting the files. As you can see, it has used AES for the encryption and with different function every time. That's why we have a bunch of functions here. Oh my God, look how many functions. All for encrypting all kinds of extensions with different, not different algorithms, it's using the RSA and AS at the same time. So with every parameter, as you can see, two is a different function with the extension to be used for the encryption. Crypto, crypto, crypto. Now, to confirm the results, I have just uploaded the file to Accurate Analysis to see what they have to say about this. So basically, according to the results, the file is marked as malicious. The threat score is 99 over 100. AV detection otherwise is 21%. Now, if you upload that to virus total, So, so far, it's a 37%, and here you can see the antivirus engines that have detected this ransomware. If you go to community, we have another sandbox analysis. Let's take a look at that. File name, the signatures, detection. These are the processes that are invoked by the ransomware. Let's get back to the hybrid analysis here. What do we have? Okay, so as you can see here, as we said earlier in the analysis, the analysis extracted file with a known ransomware suffix. It's using the crypt all the time to encrypt the files. And of course, if you don't decrypt uh, or if you don't pay, it marks some files for deletion. Of course, these, these results will be very clear when you do the dynamic analysis, of course, when you open it. But we're not going to open it, of course. Uh, yeah, that was about it. This is very brief analysis, just to give you a heads up about this ransomware and now how it is used in hitting all of the vulnerable Microsoft Exchange servers to have new exploit. Um, so, yes. So how to avoid this? As you can see, the ransomware has been detected by a good deal of antiviruses. So you have one of these antiviruses you're safe. If you have one of these, you're not. 
Um, now, of course, how, how this ransomware gets to the workstations and endpoints. So basically, if your Microsoft Exchange server is vulnerable to the Hafnium hack, then most probably the attackers will drop this piece of ransomware at your computer or at your server. So be aware of this. Okay then, that was about today and see you in the next video.